In the previous video, chapter 6, part 2, we discussed annuities, where we had finite series of level cash flows. We had payment C per period for T periods at period rate of R%. Percent. What if cash flows continue forever? When the cash flows are perpetual, the annuity will be called perpetuity. How can we find the future value of all these cash flows? We now have infinitely many numbers of payment C. How can we find the present value of these future cash flows, given there are infinitely many number of them? The present value will be the sum of present value of each C. Let me write a couple of them. Present value of first C is C over 1 plus R. Present value of second cash flow, C divided by 1 plus R to the power of 2, because you discount two periods back. I'm going to put that because there are infinitely many ratios to be added up. Mathematically, we can simplify the right-hand side to the following expression, C divided by R. No kidding. Present value of a perpetuity having payment C per period forever at R% percent per period is given by this formula. If you are interested in how to obtain this formula, let me know. I can prepare a video for math lovers, but I don't want to take your time in this video. Preferred stock is a perpetuity, which pays a fixed dividend every period, usually every quarter, forever. Assume a finance company wants to sell preferred stock at $35 per share. What dividend will X finance have to offer for this preferred stock? Let's summarize what's given on a timeline. We have the price for the stock. The price of an investment is just the present value of expected future cash flows. We are going to have dividends, fixed payments forever, every period. And the price is the present value of all these expected future cash flows. For this company, we know the present value. We don't know the dividend. That is the question. Let's use the present value formula for perpetuity. Present value is 35. We don't know the dividend divided by R. We don't know the period rate either. You can call the period rate required rate. I will use a similar ratio of preferred stock already outstanding to calculate this period rate. I'll simply visit Yahoo Finance, but I don't want to advertise the stock, the similar stock, so I will not mention the company's name or stock's symbol. But the similar preferred stock, already outstanding, has a price of $22.30 per share. On the timeline, for the similar outstanding stock, the present value is then $22.30. And this stock offers a dividend of $0.47. Cents. By using the present value formula for perpetuity, I can find the period rate by using this data. Present value equals fixed payment 0.47 divided by R. You can do cross multiplying. R is 0.47 divided by 22.3. Then R is 0.02. 107. I can now come back to the original question by using the period rate I just found. Then 35 equals C divided by 0.02107. Then C is 35 times 0.02107, which is 74 cents. This is the dividend X Finance Company have to offer for the preferred stock. If we have a perpetuity that has payments growing over time, if the payment in one period is C, and if it grows, then next period's payment will be C times 1 plus. The payment in three periods will be C times 1 plus G to the power 2. Since we have a perpetuity, we have infinitely many numbers of payments growing. Then the present value of all these future cash flows, if the period rate is R, the present value will be given by the sum of present value of each future cash flow. The present value of first cash flow C is C over 1 plus the discount rate. Plus, the present value of second cash flow is C times 1 plus G divided by 1 plus discount rate raised to the power 2. And we are going to have infinitely many ratios to be summed. Good news is we can simplify the right hand side of this equation to C over discount rate minus growth rate. And this is the present value formula for a growing perpetuity 
when the growth rate is G and discount rate is R. Let's apply the formula. The expected dividend next period is $1.50 and dividends are expected to grow at 3% forever. If the discount rate is 4%, let's find the dividend in three periods first. If it's a perpetuity, the next period dividend is $1.50. Since dividends are expected to grow at 3% forever, I will let 1.5 to grow at 3% every period. So the second period's dividend will be 1.5 times 1 plus G, G is 3%, 0.03. But we need this dividend here. So let it to grow one more period, then dividend will be 1.5 times 1 plus 0.03 raised to the second power, which is $1.59. The second question, what's today's value of the given dividend stream? So we have this dividend here. We are going to discount this back to year zero. We are going to discount this dividend back to year zero. We are going to discount this dividend back to year zero. And there are infinitely many dividends to be discounted back to year zero. Using the present value formula for growing perpetuity, we'll divide the dividend in one year, C, 1.5, by R minus G, the discount rate, 0.04, minus the growth rate, 3%, 0.03. Today's value of this dividend stream is $150. Suppose you have $10,000 to invest at a bank account and you with the local bank to discuss your option. You are told about two accounts for which the rates are coded as 4% compounded annually and 4% compounded semi-annually. 4% compounded annually means that the account will pay 4% every year. Let's compare the options. In the first option, let's have one period of length one year. So this is one year. And what's the period rate? The period rate is 4%. You invest $10,000. This is your present value. What's the future value here? The future value is 10,000 times 1 plus the period rate, 0.04, to the power number of periods, one period, which is $10,400. In the second option, 4% compounded semi-annually means the account will pay 2% every six months. Here's the timeline. Let's draw the timeline for one year. Today, since the account will pay 2% every six months, we are going to have two periods in one year. First period, six months from now, and the second period, it's 12 months from now. The period rate is 2%. You invest $10,000 today, what will be your future value? In one year, you are going to have 10,000 times 1 plus the period rate 0.02 to the second power, because T is 2. The future value is $10,404. In the first option, your money grows at 4% annually. First account pays 4% annual rate, right? It grows at 4%, while the second account pays, is the second account pays 4% annual rate. You invested 10,000 and you are going to have $10,404 in one year. So in one year, here's the growth rate or the annual rate, the difference is $404. You divide by the original amount, it's 4.04%. Since second option pays more, you will choose the second one. When we say 4% compounded semi-annually, the 4% here 
is called the stated interest rate or coded interest rate. 4% is an annual rate which will be used to find the period rate. In the second option, in one year, you actually have 4.04% return effectively. 4.04% is called effective annual rate. Here you see EAR. To compare different investment rates, use effective rates, not coded rates. If you were given a third option where the rate is coded as 4% compounded monthly, which option would you choose among the given three? We know that 4% here is an annual rate, which is called coded rate or stated rate. You know what? This is the APR, annual percentage rate. Let's draw the timeline for one year. In one year, there are 12 months, so there will be 12 periods. What's the period rate? The period rate R will be 4%, the annual rate, divided by 12. If we invest 10,000 today, the future value in one year will be given by 10,000 times 1 plus the period rate 0.04 divided by 12. We are going to raise the sum to t. t is the number of periods. That is 12. We get $10,407.42. $10,000 grows to $10,400 in the first option, $10,404 in the second option, and in the third option here, it grows to $10,407.42. Therefore, you choose the third option. Again, to compare different investment rates, use effective rates, not coded rates. The interest earned in one year is $407.42. What's the rate of return from $10,000? to $10,407.42. Based on this calculation, the effective annual rate is, you just find the growth rate. New amount minus the original divided by the original. It will give us 4.07%. Here's the formula for effective annual rate where M is the number of times the interest rate is compounded during a year. And instead of coded rate here, you can write APR, annual percentage rate. By law, in the United States, lenders disclose the coded rate or APR, annual percentage rate. That's why you see APR all over rather than period rate. By definition, APR is the product of period rate and number of periods per year. I found the effective annual rate as 4.07% by finding future value first and then the growth rate. Let's find it by using the formula. 1 plus the APR, that's the annual percentage rate or coded rate, 4%. 0.04 divided by m. m is the number of times the interest is compounded during a year. Since it's compounded monthly, it will be compounded 12 times. Then we get the same answer, 4.07%. To find the effective annual rate, EAR, for the third option, where we had 4% compounded monthly. Let's use a financial calculator. Second, I conversion, that's the key to. Nominal rate, that's the APR or coded interest rate. 
It was four. Press enter. Go up using up arrow key. CY is compounding periods per year. It was compounded monthly. So CY is 12. If I had a different number, for example, 6 before there, then I would change it to 12. Then press enter. Go up. You see EFF, effective rate. Press compute. It's 4.0742. Let's see the Excel function. Here is the Excel function for EAR, effective annual rate. Start with equal sign, type effect. First component is APR, C48. Second component is number of period per year, number of period per year, C49. 4.07% what we got by using a formula and financial calculator before. If you were given a fourth option where the rate is coded as 4% continuously compounded, you could use this formula here. You raise E to the coded rate in decimal form, then you subtract 1. You can use a calculator or you can use Excel as a calculator. E to the coded rate, that's APR and I'll subtract 1. We got 4.08%. So far, in the first option, the interest was compounded once. In the second option, twice. Third option, 12 times. As the number of times the interest is compounded gets extremely large, the EAR approaches to this expression, e to the q minus 1. E is the number approximately 2.7. 1, 8. That's the second function on your calculator for ln key. And it's not a surprise having the highest effective annual rate for continuous decompounding. compounding. <music>